So I'll start off by showing you the rigs that we use to move the shop. This first Dodge truck and big trailer here was loaned to me by the ranch. Uh, this rig here that you see, the picker truck and the trailer was loaned to me by my father-in-law, very gracious of him. And he also set me up with this Gell skid steer, which is the biggest skid steer that uh, we could find. And it was really handy for getting in the shop and removing the equipment, the heavy equipment, like the all days hammer, as you'll see here, uh, without you know, having to really do some hard maneuvering with a small loader and putting things on rollers and all that kind of stuff. This, this uh, skid steer could just pick it up and move it right out to the door of the shop where I could pick it up with a big loader, as you'll see, which is one of, uh, is owned by Bill Graham. So this is the loader that's been at the shop location that I was at. And he graciously let me use all of his equipment. We loaded this, all of this equipment up, I think on the last day in August and moved the heavy equipment. And then I had to make a few little trips after that and get some of the smaller stuff and clean up the shop and, and leave it so Bill could use it for the next thing. And then we ended up hauling the equipment home at probably two in the morning or so. It was a late night trip. But here you can see what we look like going down the highway with some very well loaded trailers. I won't say overloaded, but they but they were they were overloaded. So anyways, uh, I have been unloading the equipment and kind of have the shop set up and so here I'll give you a little tour of what's going on. So I'm going to give you a quick shop tour of what it looks like right now and some things that are to come. Here's one of the new uh, kitties that we got to mouse. They've been working hard. You can follow me. So these parts here are for a two-ton capacity uh, jib crane. And I have an electric hoist for it too. And I'm excited to get that up. And I'm probably going to end up putting it on a frame made out of uh, a drill stem uh, that's, that's really well supported and then counterbalancing uh, it with machine tools, heavy machine tools, so the base doesn't move. And setting it up that way so that the, the crane is partly portable and it's, I, don't, I don't have to commit to having it in one spot, say if I were to pour concrete and mount the crane that way. So I've seen an example, a couple of examples of that done before, so that's kind of my plan. So the shop dimensions are 100 feet long, is 100 foot long, and 54 feet wide. If you come inside, I can show you what's going on in here. So this was a totally not insulated building. You can see most of it remains uninsulated. And I had a crew come out and insulate the first 40 um, feet of it. And then, so that's insulated with rock wool. And then there's ceiling insulation. And the ceiling is tin. And I bought insulated tarps that are sitting over there in that rack. And so we're going to partition this area off this winter with the insulated tarps just to kind of keep this above zero. And um, rough it, so to speak, for this winter, even though this is an awesome place. I wouldn't consider it roughing it, but I, I think you understand what I mean. And then in years to come, we'll try and insulate the rest of it, and of course put the cladding on the walls for the rest of it. So this is just kind of temporary. You can see that I have my fork set up, and my power hammer, and press, and anvils, and tools, and all of that so that I could get some orders done right away before I spent more time setting up the tools and equipment. The, the next thing we're gonna do, actually today we'll start on it, is digging the foundation for the steam hammer. Um, as you, I don't know if the YouTube channel has seen it, but Instagram people certainly have. When I made the base for this, I didn't, instead of pouring lots of concrete and uh, doing Lots of very permanent work because I knew that this hammer was going to be moving. This hammer's moved like four times since I've had it. I instead got a, a big thick uh, steel plate that covers the entirety of the bottom. 
and using timbers and some big all thread, I have basically made like a one piece unit for the, for the 600 pound steam hammer. And uh, that makes it handy to move. Basically what we're gonna do for now is I'll dig the right depth of hole and I have screw pilings that I'm gonna install to help support it. And, uh, and then because the steam hammer right now isn't getting used a whole lot, uh, that'll be more than enough to keep it where it needs to be. And if I start using it a ton and it starts to be rocking all over the place or there's something wrong with it, then we'll go ahead and put more of a permanent foundation in at some point. But where I have had this set up, um, it's just been, I just dig out a section of dirt and put some gravel uh, under it and it seems to be just fine because the anvil is plenty heavy enough to do all that it's supposed to do. This is pretty much what the shop is gonna look like this winter. There's one more little update that I'll show you outside the dust collection system an industrial shop sucking machine, and that's this right here. I needed to set it up to get a job done, so there's a bit of duct tape on it right now, but uh, once I get the right PVC pipes to hook it up, that'll be really nice. You can see what it looks like. There's three big inlets on it with the caps, and so there's lots of room to be uh, adding more dust collection um, pipes and systems in the future to it. It runs off a 220 volt motor, so it's quite a beast of a machine. But that's a really nice thing to have. I'm really happy about that. It keeps so much of the dust away. So that's a little shop update. I'll leave you with some scenes of me digging the little bit of a foundation for the steam hammer, and then we will catch you on another shop update. Thanks for watching.